Good evening to one and all present here. I, Sahil Sethya, along with my co-host, Ridhima Singh, would like to extend a heartiest welcome to all the esteemed guests and faculty members present here on the HR panel of Sapiens 2021, the annual management conclave of Great Lakes Institute of Management, Gurgaon. It has been more than a year and a half since the pandemic outbreak. The world, while trying to adapt to the new normal, has also been trying to get back to its old ways simultaneously. Ringed in by the rules of survival and social distancing, business organizations have already come up with alternatives and have found their mid-grounds before this global fatigue reached the business world. As companies are trying to be more dynamic and sustainable, the role of HR has become more critical than ever. To optimize a hybrid workforce model, HR leaders are pushed to consider an array of factors, namely structure, workflows, flexibility, role design, and networks. HR has always been prone to changes, and pandemic cemented this fact. And it also gave HR managers a chance to adapt and survive in a challenging world. This year, Sapiens, titled Purpose-Driven Business in the Post-Pandemic World, will focus on how business practices achieve critical success factors pertinent for their growth and sustainability after the pandemic. Specifically, the current panel will discuss how HR needs to evolve to support organizations in steering towards the purpose-driven business in the post-pandemic world. The panel will share their ideas about what the interventions that HR executives may implement to help their organizations is the challenges posed by the post-COVID business environment. Before we begin our much anticipated panel discussion, I would like to request our director, Dr. Debashi Sanyar, to kindly address the audience. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. It's really a pleasure to welcome all my panelists over here uh, and our faculty member, Professor Madhuri Ma, who is going to moderate this uh, panel. Uh, uh, I would like to thank all the, not welcome, in fact, all the students and my faculty colleagues uh, to this uh, important, very important uh, uh, panel discussion, uh, because we are talking about something very important post-pandemic world. And uh, we have already seen certain development in recruitment process uh, in, in campuses. We also see some interesting intervention of work from home in a big way. Uh, so, and how it is going to pan out. Some, some of my HR friends tell it's not working. Something is working beautifully. Some uh, we see a, a, a replacement of old talent by new talent in the industry. So there are a lot of good issues which are uh, needs to be discussed and deliberated. Uh, it's become more feasible, as I mentioned earlier, for people across the world to 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 uh, to work together uh, in a single platform uh, so talent across the world sourcing talent across the world will be very exciting and interesting also for any country not only india is the talent which will matter now uh, and a lot of things will be solved uh, as far as po uh, internal policy of any country is concerned so there are a lot of interesting issues coming up i can see and we have got a well, I, I cannot say how good the panel is today uh, so, uh, with all the best wishes and looking forward to hear it till the time I'm here uh, uh, today. Unfortunately, as, as I mentioned, I have to leave in between for my appointment with the doctor at 7.30. So, so uh, please, uh, I will hand over this to MC to take it forward. Thank you, panelists, once again for joining us in this important discussion. Thank you, sir. I would like to request Dr. Poonima Gupta, Professor of OB and HR at Great Lakes Institute of Management, Gurgaon, to welcome our panelists for the day. Over to you, Purnima, ma'am. Thank you, Radhima. So I welcome our esteemed panelists. Uh, as uh, Sahil has and Radhima have already mentioned, this is a brave new world, as I call it. Like we had a book a long time back, but now again, it seems to be a brave new world, which is emerging post-COVID. And it has brought with it a lot of uncertainty, but again, a lot of opportunities. As Dr. Sanyal mentioned that this kind of a forum, we would never have thought of two years back to have uh, people from across uh, different locations uh, meeting together and very easily and very, very conveniently. So 
this is something which is an opportunity that we have had from this pandemic. But in organizations, how it caters to be, like a recent survey, I think Gartner mentioned that nowadays, like after pandemic, about 48% of the employees will most likely work remotely. And earlier it was about 30%, so 18% increase in the work from home or remote workers, or what we call the digital nomads nowadays is going to increase. It's again an opportunity for organizations because with the millennials and even the Gen I, flexibility is what they desire. So it's not even just work from home, it's work from anywhere. So that's the kind of uh, an opportunity which the companies have, but again, it brings with it a lot of challenges. A lot of monitoring is required, analytics, uh, will go in, in increasing uh, the monitoring of the employees. So more and more analytics will be required to maybe dehumanize something a little bit because with this remote working, even the engaging the employees becomes a little difficult. So how to create this culture of inclusiveness that uh, with this post pandemic, getting people back, a lot of, um, I think fatigue is being felt. People are used to working from home then getting back to the offices or people are clamoring to be in office. So a lot of confusion is there and uh, a lot of companies are finding it a bit of a challenge to uh, manage this thing. So we'd be definitely looking forward to hearing your views about how your organizations are dealing with the situation, whether you are dealing with the situation or not, because that's what it appears to be from the papers, from the Twitter, from the tweets and social media that we see. So I'd like to welcome our esteemed panelists, Mr. Anmol Greval, Chitendra Das, Chatranje, uh, Vini, uh, Siddharth Shukla, sorry, and uh, also our faculty colleagues, Madhurima, for uh, moderating the session. And uh, I also extend a very hearty welcome to our director for however long he'll be here. I'm sure that uh, we'll learn something new. And all the staff and the students who would uh, definitely learn more about that, whatever we talk in the HR classes, it is sometimes useful to you to learn, even in the divine working in the industry, whichever role you are in. Over to you, Sahil and Radhima. Thank, Thank you. you so much, ma'am. We now take the opportunity to introduce our panelists for the day. Let me introduce our first panelist for the day, Mr. Anmol Garewal, Head of Human Resources, Ashok Leland. Mr. Anmol Garewal is an MBA in HR from Punjab University. He is a Senior Certified Professional HR, conferred by the Society of Human Resource Management. Prior to Ashok Leland, he has worked with ITC for a span of 11 years as the head HR ITC Maurya and divisional HR manager for the pre-opening and opening operations of new projects and hotels. With nearly two decades of industrial experience, Mr. Garewal is at the zenith of HR management. I would now like to introduce our next speaker for the day, Mr. Jitendra Das. Mr. Das is the director and head of HR in Move and Sync Technologies and work in sync, a series B funded startup. Prior to this, he has worked for companies such as CK Birla Group, Algonim Industries, Murugappa Group, and Integrion Managed Solution. He holds a master's in human resource management and labor relations from Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai, and is also a certified coach. I would now like to invite our next speaker for the day, Mr. Shatrunjay Krishna, Group Head, GMR Group. Mr. Shatrunjay is an auxiliary alumnus. He is responsible for organization design, learning and development at GMR Group. Prior to this, he has worked with Con Ferry Hay Group as senior principal. Mr. Krishna has been the director, rewards, talents and communications at Towers Watson. He has also served as the senior advisor to the Ministry of Education, UAE government. His professional expertise and experience revolves around various domains. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome Mr. Siddharth Nagpal, senior professional, New Development Bank, Shanghai, China, as our next panelist for the day. Mr. Nagpal is an MBA in human resources from XLRI Jamshedpur. He has been instrumental in designing and implementing a talent management framework in line with the organizational strategy. He was also an, an integral part in the launch of the bank's global talent management program, which matched great talent with opportunities to build and expand the business. For his valuable contributions, he was featured in the HRD Hotlist 2020. I would now like to introduce Professor Madhurima Misra, 
faculty OB and HR at Great Lakes Institute of Management, Gurgaon, as a moderator for the panel. Professor Mishra is soon to be awarded her PhD from IIM Rotak. She also heads the HR club of the institute. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Sahil. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Great Lakes Institute of Management, Gurgaon, I welcome you all to the OB and HRM panel of Sapiens 2021. This panel would be deliberating upon the role of HR in supporting purpose-driven businesses in the post-pandemic world. We'll now be proceeding with the first topic for today's discussion. So let me ask all our panelists here, has your organization adapted to the new normal? How has HR evolved in the post-pandemic world? So uh, we'll be moving on uh, alphabetically. So may I first request Mr. Anmol Singh Garewal to respond. Thank you. Uh, I hope I'm audible to everyone. Yep. Yeah. Well, firstly, thanks to Dr. Gupta, to the Great Lakes team, and to Amanpreet Olak for uh, you know uh, getting making me a part of this, and it's an honor to be a part of uh, this forum. And uh, yes, so getting to the business at hand, uh, you know, has your organization adapted to the new normal? Well, actually, we are still trying to decipher what the new normal is. But uh, in the last two years, some of, uh, you know, the aspect which has come to the core is that firstly, there has been a business impact in terms of redefining your business model. You know, you were used to running your business in a specific format for years and decades, and suddenly all that has been challenged. So that is one. The second impact has been the cultural impact, which is the largest in terms of the organization culture. That uh, COVID was a big speed breaker and how did organizations handle the softer side of it? Like did companies provide timely medical help? Did, did companies provide that emotional support which was required at that point in time? And uh, I can guarantee that the companies which had a caring approach during the pandemic will come out much more successful than the ones who directly went into cost cutting or into various sort of layoffs and casualization of labor, right? So since we are in a HR forum, uh, it, is it is better to discuss things openly. So uh, first thing was the challenging of the business model itself that, you know, you were used to a certain form of distribution of your product, sales of your product. Now everything has become omni-channel. Everything has become, uh, you know, why the, the internet has become a bigger force in distribution. For example, today you can buy a Mercedes on a discounted India online, you know, rather than rather than speaking to the dealership directly. So uh, that is the sort of power which internet has 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 brought in, especially during the pandemic. So the whole game of logistics, distribution, and sales channels has changed. So the companies which are into omni-channel, they will do far better. <laughs> The second challenge, as I said, was the cultural impact. That is where the softer HR part came in. You know, there were companies, uh, for example, Ashok Leyland, we were mature enough to provide a VRS, a sizable package to some of the people, you know, uh, across across India, because yes, you were into cost rationalization, you were not getting the business, you were not. But then it, it all depends upon how well you handle these things and where's the human touch. So coming to the fore, if you are able to marry good HR practices and culture with a business model, you are in a winner's sort of a spot as of now. And uh, as I said, we are still adapting to it. Uh, the few challenges which are ahead, uh, the VUCA world continues, right? Second, a lot of businesses have gone through the, uh, the biggest paralysis of demand forecasting. That earlier we used, we used to forecast demand in a specific way. We had a lot of data and all that data doesn't mean anything. It is, it is a very emerging sort of a, a picture. So, the, uh, so that is one. Other part is that, uh, as I said, the biggest uh, thing where HR can now support a business in terms of, is in terms of agility and speed of innovation. Because overnight, for example, if you've been making for 100 years a diesel vehicle, you have to overnight make a CNG, LNG sort of a vehicle, right? So that's the innovation, not only automotive sector is going through or my company is going through, that's the innovation, which everyone, every business has to be ready for. So how is HR uh, supporting <laughs> that endeavor of a company in terms of a changing business model, in terms of a changing uh, demand forecast, in terms of a changing product? 
so uh, you know last 5 years companies were talking about agility now you actually have to show that agility in the marketplace <laughs> you know so it's not a word anymore it is action so i think these are my views without taking much further time on this okay so may i please ask you if there are any specific hr practices that have been rolled out uh, uh, specifically after the pandemic has there any been uh, has there been any change in terms of hr practices mr garwal anything new uh, yes which yes. your organization or probably uh, other uh, competitors in the same industry probably are rolling out in fact i already shared firstly the human touch uh, the human touch in terms of getting a timely rt pcr done providing the medical coverage etc and all that really created a very positive impact because each of our factory has about thousands of people you know and you have to take it down to the lowest common denominator so that is one aspect of the game the second part is that uh, even while taking tough decisions you know in terms of the costs and all right how innovative you have been and how much you thought about the people for example as i shared that you know you know giving a timely vrs to some of the people was a great uh, support even to those individuals because you know in a pandemic situation at least they uh, they have been taken care of for the next 3 4 5 years sort of situation so so those are the sort of initiatives so as i said one was the health side the medical side then of course uh, the soft touch in terms of you know providing a timely sort of uh, severance package and all these are the these are the other aspects but one of the bigger things which came out was that how how well you can adapt to work from home also you know because somewhere you can't make a truck sitting in hey you want to work from home you have to physically at the factory but uh, still even in that sort of an environment we handled it very well you know uh, i would say that the the greatest feedback which we get from our people who are whether they are 18 years old or 60 years old is the sort of uh, medical support provided and the sort of uh, uh, flexibility in terms of working hours and working from home yeah but uh, on the journey there were some pulls and pressures also because uh, you know you have to handle the industrial relations very sensitively various various aspects are there so so those were the learnings perhaps. thank you mr garwal may i now request our next panelist mr jitendra das to put forth his views ah uh, thank you professor madhurema and uh, thanks and more i think you know you have almost captured lot of uh, Uh, things that happening across uh, the world in hr fraternity and i'll not say hr per se this is this is what the demand for the organization uh, okay before i go ahead and i just now sharing my views uh, i just wanted to say thank you uh, for making me part of the panel uh, for the steam panel and uh, it's again you know brings us back to that you know i think 11 years ago i was on the other side and you know listening to lot of uh, these conversations but that was uh, all live okay i think then the, the entire concept of future is already here so there's, there's no more nothing that we can say that that you no know, the future of work, this is the present of the world uh coming back and also uh, i had two transitions during this time okay so uh, one i was working with a manufacturing organization okay almost uh, at the first part of the pandemic and then when the later stage it came i joined another organization which is a startup okay and both had a different way of uh, looking at things okay uh, i was with ck birla group and with it was a primarily manufacturing base you know we had manufacturing across uh, i think 13 locations in india and in germany also and the challenge was you know how do we make sure you know uh, the product you know the demand and forecasting as you know i think mr anmol talked about is right and not only right and also we deliver at the right time the challenge what we face in the manufacturing organization is totally different than what we face in the uh, in the startup uh, what we you know if you look at you know uh, uh, let's talk about the startup that i'm right now working for so in the last two years you know if you look at the entire world that that you know lot of challenges has come okay from companies to employees clients business owner almost everything changed okay and the shift from self quarantine which we never thought of to actually social distancing you know uh, that required the companies to pivot very quickly you know and make sure that you know the the services are under, uninterrupted what happened uh, in our organization especially in move and sing okay so our business model itself has had to evolve during this pandemic uh, the reason being you know our our business was heavily dependent on employee mobility if you look at in simple terms you know 
we are the Ola or Uber for corporates, okay, and employees. And as you know, during this pandemic, you know, uh, you know, the entire mobility stopped, okay, which actually hit uh, the organization so hard that survival became a question mark. As there's no offices who are working, uh, everything was closed, shut down. So, you know, there's no question of using uh, mobility. Okay, as an organization, what we have done, I think, uh, I think, I think we have done great uh, 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 to give uh, all the praise to the employees and the leadership. Like you know, we had quickly pivoted ourselves and created a new niche during the pandemic. Okay, and that's that's basically we came up with a new product called Work in Sync. Okay, as we speak today, uh, so Work in Sync is basically a hybrid uh, uh, workspace solution. Okay, uh, and uh, for now, we actually you know got into a lot of good clients and doing quite well. So what I'm trying to say is, you know, the entire pandemic has, you know, uh, actually moved, shifted the thinking process. The organization Move in Sync has been in, into the market for last ten years almost, and we're the largest mobility provider. Okay, and we never thought that we will be actually uh, rethinking and great getting into a new space. But you know, within a couple of months, we had to actually not only get into a new product space. Uh, in fact, you know, we started rebranding ourselves in that particular Work in Sync space. Okay, from HR point of view, if you look at, you know, uh, what we, you know, I think uh, between both these organizations, what we have done, I think, I think concept of the entire benefit, okay, has changed, okay, the benefit that you give it to the you know, employees, okay, you know, for example, uh, work from home, that was kind of a benefit, okay, uh, which some organization are giving, some organization not giving, but not, now that has become priority, okay, so we, which means your uh, line of thinking has shifted that, you know, that you have to be in a one place working with everyone and deliver from there to, you can be anywhere in the world and still can deliver, which brings a lot of challenges for HR professionals. Okay. Like us, you know, we, we, you know, as uh, I think, uh, 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 Anmol talked about already and Dr. Punima also talked about that, you know, uh, we don't know, like, you know, what's, what's the right way of dealing with it. But the fact is like, you know, uh, every day uh, we are facing challenge, you know, how do we make sure, like, you know, whatever the future of work is, you know, you know but making sure that uh, employees are engaged, okay? Creating an engagement activity is no more uh, 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 and it's something like, you know, you create a birthday party, it's no more like that, okay? Uh, how do we still create a passion and purpose in almost all of employees so that they come? Because almost everyone, I know that new concept again came is the great resignation, you know, like, you know, almost every day you see number of employees, especially I, I know I'm come from startup, okay, where the talent crunch is already there, okay, and almost everyone is becoming unique on every second day, uh, which means, you know, that the challenge of you know, making sure how do we engage these kind of uh, employees are going to be very important. One thing, okay, I think in India, especially I worked outside India for quite a few years, but I realized, you know, in India, one thing which was always uh, hidden under the carpet, which was talking about your mental health, okay? If you look at a lot of organization, even ours, we, we went ahead and talked about, you know, to even give a mental health week, mental health leave, okay? Uh, if someone is not feeling, you know, burnt out, like they can go back and you know, take those rest. I think these, these are the ways that the HR is changing, okay? Uh, what I always, you know, which I always believe, you know, um, most of us, you know, we, we you know, primarily spend so much of time on the operation part, you know, what's next, uh, you know, how do we make sure, you know, we just deliver what the email has come. From there, I think that uh, the shift has happened that now we have to actually uh, stay back for some time, you know, rethink possibly sometimes, you know, revisit the entire thing that we have done. Another thing I think which, uh, in fact, just before this uh, conference, so I was meeting my team, okay, and some of them, you know, we had this, uh, uh, concept of telling signal, this is how it was working, okay? But the fact is, it's not going to work anymore, okay? Every day, how do we make sure that uh, we rethink our, ourselves, you know, be it the way we design our benefits, how do we engage uh, the employees, how do we make sure that their mental health is taken care of, and still, you know, instill a sense of purpose that they feel like, you know, getting up in the morning and logging into their website, uh, or sorry, uh, laptop, wherever they're in the world. Because many a times it can happen that you know they can you know they may or may not log in, okay. But still we have to trust them and you know and build that uh, confidence in them and and they deliver for us. I think that's what uh, I I see the changes are coming in. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. Yeah. So uh, just a follow up question with, with respect to what you've spoken. So, uh, you know, uh, you must be aware that many companies today, uh, they are trying to monitor their employees through innovative methods like uh, you know, virtually they're trying to check how much at what time you clocked in and at what time you clocked out or probably they're trying to track your computer usage. So uh, when somebody comes to work physically, then uh, it becomes relatively easier to monitor. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, virtually also uh, such types of things are coming up. So what's your take on that? Do you think it's effective? Or should we just trust our employees that okay. they would, they would so be working? This, uh, this question reminds me. So I, I have a mentor. So he's been my mentor for the last, I think, eight years. Uh, uh, so his name is Peter Atfield. You know, and I think uh, best ever boss I ever had in my life. Again, everyone is good enough. But he had a different way of looking at that uh, concept of you know monitoring of employees. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm talking about, I'm just giving you an example. So and I'm talking about that happened in 2014. Okay, in 2014, so uh, we are talking about and discussing about a policy. Okay, and when we're discussing some of the business said, you know, they came and said like, you know, uh, when we're designing a policy so that you create an intent, what, why we are creating the policy, correct? So the intent, uh, so the, you know, we had a different intent, okay, and the business says, then they talked about, uh, you know, we need to guide, uh, uh, guard our, safeguard our organization because the employees are generally fraud. Okay, uh, so my uh, mentor, so I was there in the meeting, we both sat down together and he commented that, you know, if that's how the policy is created, we will not create any policy. Okay, and we'll not roll out any policy. Why I'm trying to say this uh, at this point of time, it again comes back, uh, see, it's all about trust. Okay, so we have to create an organization, okay, which is, uh, you know, and then again, coming back to the mental health, you know, what we are, Going. So most of the mental health challenges come not only because you are overwhelmed, but there is a trust deficit between manager and the employee or the organization and the employee. Okay, uh, rather than creating you know systems to track them, I think I think uh, we should be moving ahead uh, with new concepts like OKR. Okay, how do you make sure that you know, their objectives are defined in such a way? Okay, and the key results are defined in such a way that you no. Know, uh, instead of tracking them, track their results that, you know, what the key results they are producing are that matching up to the organization objective overall or not. If that is done, I think, you know, uh, you can be anywhere, you can take leave, you can be, you know, actually sitting in a beach and, you know, delivering the eight hour job in one hour, okay? There are people who does it. That is going to create more engagement than, uh, you know, creating trust deficit, I will not, you know, even like, you know, when I'm having the discussion um, with my management and luckily most of uh, the leaders that I work with, they're very, very pro that, you know, and, you know, like work in sync that we created uh, is also with an intent that, you know, how do we create the hybrid workspace and create trust in the organization. And one of the motto we very clearly talked about to all the clients, we tell them that, you know, our motto is to provide a solution where uh, hybrid is possible, but not to track any employees. Okay, yeah, thank you, Mr. Das. So uh, may I now request our next panelist, Mr. Shatrunjay Krishna to present his views. Okay, so first of all, I thank you all for inviting me on this session and uh, very happy to be here. Um, uh, when we talk about what changes, I think uh, it's a very, uh, at one level, easy question, other level, difficult question, because these changes will keep unfolding. And these changes were anyway in the, uh, somewhere there on the radar, but they were sort of accelerated by, by you know, COVID. So I would like to classify these things. So the way I look at it, there are four or five, you know, important uh, things to pick up for, you know, people here and students, I see mostly the students and some industry professional. Uh, one thing is that uh, the business itself is changing. And obviously, HR will change when the businesses change. The fundamental uh, ways that businesses are changing is that there is no longer a you know, straight industry. So you have a logistic industry and you have a technology industry, and they have merged together you know, in e-commerce. You have a, you know, a personal care product uh, industry and a logistic industry. They have merged in like, Sinaika. Uh, you have, so fundamentally, the traditional industries themselves are changing. So, you know, uh, that uh, uh, and uh, that that COVID is accelerated because 
dynamic being digital and being a contactless sort of an economy. So this will uh, this was already happening, but uh, you know probably what COVID has done, uh, it has accelerated it by five six years. So that's one task, and that puts HR in a uh, in a position to drive that change. And I think some of my predecessor were speaking about that. How do we drive that business change so that business is able to you know, ride that wave rather than being a laggard? So that's one fundamental question. You know, When the operating model is changing, when we are becoming digital, uh, when we are becoming contactless, when we are becoming, uh, you know, all these changes are happening, how HR looks at that? Uh, you know, HR obviously has lead that, and that's a fundamental role of HR, you know, managing the change, managing not only internal change, but the business change, you know, the kind of people that we require earlier, those will be, you know, the people who will require different things, maybe the same people, but different skills. Uh, so, so that is one. So HR has to anticipate that and keep building an internal case, because who is going to make the change happen? It's either going to be the chief executive or you know, HR or the entire top, top, top layer. Uh, so that is what uh, I have seen at least in my company and other companies that I you know, closely interact with is that uh, HR has to lead that change at multiple layer. And, you know, we spoke about that um, at the structure layer, at the technology layer, at the operating model layer, at the skill layer, being the HR change, uh, HR being the change in. So that's one. So that's on the more on the business side and in the enterprise side. The second change is more on the personal side. And there's always a enterprise side in HR and more as a personal side, as an as a, as a, as a, as a individual side, as an employee side to HR. And in that, uh, uh, one of the fundamental uh, things that have happened, I would say this thing was, anyways, you know, this thing was also there to some extent, but uh, maybe it was uh, different across industries, but it has become a, great leveler across industries is that the focus is again on the individual, which means that there is a health and well-being requirement, we know you go back to individual, which means that there is a looming attrition on the horizon, you, you go back to individual. So there is going to be focus more on individual. Right now, as we see, you know, suddenly last year, it seemed like it is going to be a employer's market and this year it's coming to the employee's market because there's so much of change happening you know, there are recessions happening, attrition rising, and, you know, employees are again in demand. So the role of HR there that is changing is that putting the spotlight on employees, on individuals, looking at the health and well-being aspect, I think everybody has spoken about it, so I don't need to go there. Looking at the mental well-being, uh, physical well-being, and other, other, other environmental factors. So that's the second change. Uh, that change was anyway in the coming, but you know, it was uh, it was very, very slow. Now this change is, it's again there. And this is uh, this is what we've been managing. You know, last year, probably we all were managing in HR, uh, the costs, uh, the structure, how do we, you know, safeguard our employees? How do we safeguard our businesses? And this year, you know, probably many in the industry, including mine is an offensive, how do we grow? How do we grow very fast? How do we outcompete our competition? So those things are happening. The another third, uh, you know, big uh, change that I'm seeing, and that's my personal observation, is that uh, as uh, employees are working hybrid, and you know, many uh, even our companies, you know, where we run airports, energy plants, we run digital businesses, data centers, etc. Uh, we uh, traditionally were very, you know, averse to, uh, uh, you know. Uh, hybrid sort of working, working from remote. But in this era, you can't avoid that. Definitely you have to leave people on the side. The airports will have to be there, but there is a significant portion of people who are working remote. So that change has happened. The implication of that change is that the employment uh, relationship between the employer and employees change. If you are not seeing your colleagues for, uh, for nine months, uh, then you will become sort of a single agent. And single agent uh, bonds with the organization are are supposed to be weak. So you know, despite all these Zoom meetings and all these chit chat that we have, the employee employer bonds are weakening, uh, fundamental level. And that's my personal observation. Uh, and that's where all these great resignation. Uh, I would put that as a root cause for this resignation. Even if I would say that if you leave one company, go to another, 
fundamentally, you know, the world is not changing and I've done mentorship myself. And I know that similar situations will play out in different companies. Uh, but because the employee and employer bonds are weakening because of remote, uh, remote, uh, the shift, uh, a, a one job shift is uh, the, the costs are less because of, I have not made any emotional investment in the current company or with my colleagues or with my team. That HR has to look out and see that even though we have a hybrid uh, sort of a work environment, how do we uh, keep people connected? And we, uh, I think early in the pandemic and even now we we keep doing you know, a lot of these experiments that even though people are working remotely, how do they feel that they are part of one company? And there could be, you know, learning intervention around that. There could be, you know, groups around that, uh, but not at a very, you know, surface and uh, sort of symbolic level, but at the real level, you have to think about that. Because that's a genuine problem that's going to hit because, uh, and that is already hitting. I would say the great resignation that people are talking about is is, uh, is an outcome of that. So you know maybe uh, these these factors that I spoke about they are in not a particular order, but I see all these things playing out. And uh, in uh, in in our capacity as uh, in GMR Group and you know my earlier work with uh, you know, Conferry Hay Group, and I you know I keep connecting with my clients. And that's what I see that. Uh, these things are playing out, and uh, definitely, the I would say that this is the role of a, a, a HR professional in organization to you know actively lead the charge in these areas. And definitely, the strategies, tactics will vary from across industries, and what is suitable for you at a particular stage. But uh, I would say that you know these are the things that you have to watch out for. So uh, this is what I wanted to convey. Obviously, all the my predecessors have spoken about very relevant factors. So uh, those and combined with these is what is uh, I would like to share with you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Krishna. So um, regarding this topic, I'd finally request Mr. Siddharth Nagpal to share his thoughts with us. Thank you, Professor Adhanima. And um, you know, this reminds me of my student days when you know Viva used to happen in alphabetical order, and I used to get all the answers, get to know all the questions before the before answering in there. The challenge in these kind of Zoom calls or these uh, panel discussion is that everything that's worth saying is already said by all my fellow esteemed panelists. So maybe let me just add a few bits of my perspective on this. I think uh, very recently I was reading somewhere, I think uh, everybody's talking about the new normal. What is the new normal after the pandemic? And maybe, maybe I think some of the people are opining that maybe there's no new normal. It's a never normal situation. We were talking about a Delta variant or some Xi variant or some now we've got Omicron variant. Maybe something else will change in the future or something. And what's in there? What where does it leave all of us as people from the business or professionals or students? Right. I think all of us were somewhere back in the mind, we're hoping that you know one day things will get will get back to normal and we'll start traveling and attending school and attending work like we used to. Maybe that's not the future. I know I'm maybe sounding pessimistic, but maybe we have to prepare for maybe multiple futures. And I think going forward, is it another variant standing in the next month that's going to come up? Is it another wave of pandemic that's going to come up? I don't know. Is it pandemic will get over, something else will come up? Is climate change going to impact all of us? Or is there some technology change going to impact all of us? So we don't know. I think the only, only muscle that leaves you know, uh, will define who's a winner and who's a loser is your one's ability to be agile and nimble. So I think, and that's where I think in, in all ways of working, be it in our running an organization, be it in running HR processes, be it in running institute like, you know, Great Lakes, a great institute like, you know, that, that you're running, working and studying, I think physically, I think it's not many students uh, are fortunate enough these days. And similarly, I think in the past few months, all of us have witnessed that and how it impacts not just, you know, remote working or hybrid working formats or moving to electronic mediums of communication. It's impacting everybody at a human level, at a personal level, at a business level, organization level, all across. I think one of the first things I think like uh, my uh, colleague Shatrunjay just mentioned, that you know there is a, this whole great resignation wave coming up primarily because you know 
people are not feeling that bond with the organization anymore and uh, maybe that that bond is weakening absolutely right i think that that's one of the definite reasons in there i think in 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 a situation like this and people are working remotely or working on and off you know some days your office is open some days they are closed down again or something what's changing is also the how people work with each other i think the people the trust the camaraderie that people used to enjoy in offices working together doesn't exist anymore maybe or maybe it exists in a very different shape and size or maybe people that trust to establish that trust to retain that trust so i think that's impacting many ways i think uh, there was a earlier question about uh, how do you monitor your employees i mean there are there are all sorts of philosophies should we monitor our employees or should we not should we look at the deliverable or should we look at the, how much person that time that person is spending on the sitting on the system so i think those those things are some of those classic or fundamental questions that it, that this whole pandemic situation has raised for hr professionals definitely and all organization today no matter big or small or manufacturing or services or it whatever it is everybody is is trying to struggle with this and struggling with these kind of uh, questions uh, day in day out so i think maybe uh, uh, what's changing i think everything is changing and anybody you know today whenever i go and try to research over the internet or read something i don't read anything which is prior 2020 i think it all those principles or all those you know management books doesn't hold some, some to me it feels that it doesn't professor madhurima seems like mr nagpas connections dropped yes i was thinking it's just mind probably nobody else is also able to hear him uh no i think his connections dropped by so in interim while he joins we can probably move to the next question and the moment he's here we can probably we'll take it up later yeah. so um let's move on to the next question uh, uh can hr upgrade itself to the to face the challenges posed by the pandemic so till now we've discussed how our organizations have been battling with covid so far and what has been done so far but how do you think uh, hr is going to change for the future what is going to be the future face of hr so um uh, some of your thoughts and reflections on this matter so uh, let me start with mr garewal first again so mr garewal please if you'd like to respond yeah. thank you thank you professor mishra uh, so i would just like quickly like to share just three thoughts around this that uh, firstly we have entered the era of constant contingency planning both from a business side and from a people side and as uh, shatrun ji very rightly said that the big resignation uh, has already started and what is what is another reality which is now hitting organizations is also that uh, you are rolling out offers and people are not joining you know because uh, life is a bigger game people feel that maybe you know uh, why should i come back to work right now maybe family is more important or maybe health is more important or maybe there are much larger priorities than to you know uh, resume office and as shatran ji and the rest of the panelists have been saying that uh, you know you 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 have no idea about uh, the reality in terms of the number of variants and when is this thing going to end and how do we coexist with it so i would say as a hr professional because you have to do that constant contingency planning that's the first part which includes the employee support and the manpower planning as well the second part is uh, make agility as a part of your dna in fact uh, firstly each hr department across industry should have its own agility task force you know in terms of uh, getting things right uh i'll give a small example from a show clearland you know uh, already a lot of work happening on migrating systems from towards say darwin box right you know in terms of that anything which gives you better speed in terms of uh, you know uh, speed of operation speed of process and and uh, you know real time data so that is that is a small example in terms of hr being more agile and uh, you know and third which is always been there throughout history right from the times of 
times of Christ and right from the times of Gautam Bodh and all, is that whatever change you have to bring, bring it with a human face, all right? So uh, what we have to do is we have to marry cutting edge technology, cutting edge agility and HR practices with the oldest mantra of, uh, you know, maintaining a human face. So whether we, we, we look at Gandhi or Gautam Bodh or Christ or any, <laughs> you know, in, in, any of uh, such examples. So how do we, how do we create that human face? And it should not be a facade. So, for example, today only I've started working on a because I'm uh, hitting a bit of a lean phase in terms of uh, manufacturing. So, I'm already looking at outplacement of uh, you know some of the associates at the, at the lower level. You know, contacting my uh, contacting my distributors, contacting my uh, suppliers because they are part of a large supply chain. That you know, how, what sort of a outplacement support they can provide. So as I was saying that it's all real time and uh, yeah, these are my, my views, summary views. Okay, thank you, Mr. Garewal. I think uh, Mr. Nagpal has joined. So uh, Mr. Nagpal, would you like to continue? We've moved on to the next question. So if you'd like to uh, give your concluding remarks before I may pose the next question to you. I'm sorry, I think I, I'm not sure what happened with my system or maybe connectivity. So anyways, I think I was talking about, uh, yes, I think uh, the whole concept of employer employee relationship, I think is undergoing a change in the current scenario. And I think in this scenario, you know, establishing trust or establishing, uh, you know, a working relationship is, is getting all the more difficult and there are new means and new models of doing that and I think which all of us need to learn and uh, implement and I think one of the important muscles that all of us need to build as we go forward in this journey is uh, is the journey of uh, you know something uh, a journey of being agile and I think how can we be more agile in our not just in a mindset but in terms of organization structure processes and how we approach our problems on a day-to-day -day basis. So yes, I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, like I was mentioning earlier, I think, you know, when today we, when you go out and read or anything about management, which is prior to 2020, some of that doesn't seem to be fitting in well today in the current scenario and things have changed significantly. So I think, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I would like to say. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so we started with the uh, second question for today. So I'll repeat the question for you. How can it create itself to face the challenges posed by the pandemic? So till now we've discussed how uh, HR has changed over the past two years, probably since the pandemic has started. So uh, what is going to be the future phase of HR? And uh, what could be some of the things that we could uh, start off with to revamp HR as a whole, as a function? Uh, so uh, can we hear your views? So I think I think when we talk about future, um, you know, we are not sure what is the future, or maybe we'll have to be very design or think or plan for multiple futures. You know, we're not sure if today there is an Omicron, maybe there is a next version coming up some few months later, or maybe there is something else which is you know loitering around the corner, maybe it's a climate change issue or something else that is there. Now, as an organization, you know, one needs to be planning for multiple futures. I think all of us, uh, we are hoping that we'll move to a new normal situation or a back to normal situation. Maybe there is a never normal situation now. Maybe this is how it's going to be. And, uh, you know, and, and I think from an HR standpoint, I think it impacts everything from top to down of the entire HR system or any organization. Uh, you know, not just your, you know, how do you structure your organization and how do you design a compensation benefits or what is a basic employee employer relationship that has gone completely transformed. So now I think, uh, you know, when my colleague earlier were talking about the great resignation wave, I think, yes, that's, that's happening because uh, while he was mentioning that there's a loss of bond between the employer and the employee. And it's also a factor of, you know, how uh, they, how people's, thinking around the employee employee relationship has changed maybe there is no more concept of uh, maybe working with the same company for more than 2 years or 3 years maybe it's broken down into 
smaller six month assignment or three month assignment and, and working on very specific areas of work for a very short term uh, uh, assignment basis. So I think from that perspective, I think HR needs is challenged with the fact that one, we need to attract, retain, engage our talent uh, uh, in, with, within the organization, as well as ensure that we are able to maximize value both ways from the what employee can contribute to the organization and what the organization contribute with, to the employee. So I think that that needs to be maximized in, in many ways. So our old training models of how do we train people and then they will work through and they'll develop. All of those seems very, very irrelevant today. So I think uh, how we can, instead of that, I think now we're thinking about how do we have a more agile training system or agile learning system or on the training on the go or bite-sized learning, you know, we provide very point, pointed learning interventions or inputs when that person needs it. And not that you have a one week program and then you go away and you come back after that and then apply that learning or something. So all those models have changed completely. And all aspects of it, when, when you talk about compensation and benefits. So I think when today, when I think some of the startups, when they go out and hire for, you know, longer term equity kind of uh, compensation and benefits kind of a program, I, I'm not sure how many people today are very excited about it because people are not able to think beyond a certain few years or something to add before committing to any new employer employee relationship. So yes, I think that's that's a challenge that all of us are working towards. And I think only way that we can think is uh, you know is to be adapting and it and adapting with a very agile and nimble mindset. I think, and then I think it, everything has become much more situational these days. And uh, that's what I think needs to reflect in our HR processes and systems. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Mr. Nagpal. So uh, may I request our next panelist, Mr. Das, to kindly respond. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Madhuruma, once again. I think it's a great question. How do we upgrade ourselves? Uh, so, you know, like, you know, since I have, uh, came into HR and I'm sure before in HR also. Uh, so we always heard like, you know, okay, the only task that HR does it, uh, making rangolis, okay? Uh, almost everywhere. I think there are a lot of uh, comedians to uh, uh, YouTube channels, okay? And uh, I'm sure at least my colleagues in the panel, they'll agree that, you know, that's not the truth, okay? There's a lot of hard work that goes in. But how do we make sure, like, you know, uh, this, you know, the, in the face of pandemic, what we can do and how do we upgrade ourselves? Well, I think uh, to accept the change, okay, if I have to give an example, so, you know, stop believing that, you know, we are going to be always making rangolis. I think this is a time that we can actually be a Picasso and, you know, make a better drawing, okay, or better uh, art or picture, okay, except the change that, you know, uh, it's not going to be the same again, how we used to think, you know, and that's what, you know, Almost every day when I, I sit down with my team, you know, I keep on reiterating one thing, whatever has worked yesterday uh, and whatever is working today may not be working tomorrow. So how do we make sure that every day we challenge ourselves and rethink on everything? Second, I think uh, most important part, which uh, uh, we as HR, and I'm sure all professionals, not only HR, we need to you know, step back at times okay, and rethink. Rethink almost in every processes, every ways of doing things that we are doing today or we were doing yesterday. Uh, most often than not, like what happens is we are into this uh, grind where we always, you know, my first reaction in the morning, okay, oh, this many email has come, this, this is what we need to do, this is what someone has asked. I think uh, stepping back, rethink in all the processes, possibly use the concept of design thinking, use the concept of uh, Six Sigma, Lean, etc., and rethink what are the processes that we can you know, eliminate here. Okay, and technology has become, I think, a uh, game changer, okay, and especially in HR technology, which is evolving almost every day. So uh, as a part of one of the things, you know, the reason I, in fact, I actually moved to startup because uh, my love for technology, okay, and I, I talked a lot of, you know, uh, startup innovators who are into HR tech domain. So I think uh, as HR professional, as an expert into that, I think we again have a role to play, not only for our own organization, but for the entire HR fraternity and for the business. Rethink, you know, whatever, you know, operational task we can you know, let go, 
okay, which is happening. Like for example, uh, so many HR techs that have come up. You know, many things which yesterday took uh, time. You know, you know, even the signing your appointment letter. Okay, just just let go of those. Okay, and rethink about how technology can actually help you. Okay, uh, the fourth thing which I think uh, which is required an HR professional. Okay, create an organization of collaboration. Okay, a culture of trust. Uh, and that's going to be uh, the key, like you know, whatever we talked about today, like how do you, you know, create trust between employees? How do you create collaboration and an engagement? I think uh, uh, one thing that we uh, as an HR fraternity can go back and do is, you know, create collaboration and break the silos. Okay, almost all organization had silos, okay, which was even when there are office work in the same office, today we are no more working in office. Many of my colleagues, I only met on Zoom calls for last two years, okay? Never met in person. So how do you break those silos? I think taking help of the leadership, okay, instill a culture of continuous learning and innovation and break the silos. I think that's going to be important. Another part which I think is going to be important is, you know, uh, developing a nurturing strategic partnership, not only, uh, you know, with, you know, doing an orientation and exit, but I think strategic partnership throughout the organization, both internal and external parties. Internal, because they are my employees, you know, it's very important to understand their personal needs. Okay, and uh, I think someone mentioned that, you know, it is no more uh, a group thinking that we do, you know, whatever applies for one person, it will apply for everyone. It's not going to hold true, uh, especially when you have to create an engagement with individual employees. Otherwise, you know, it's very easy that they, you know, tomorrow they will be not second organization, then third organization, fourth organization, but they don't, they don't uh, have any kind of uh, bond, okay? So how do you create that is going to be the internal partnership is going to be important. External parties, again, going back, like, you know, what is happening outside the market, okay? What's happening in the HR technology space, what the other organizations are doing, you know, understanding if something uh, can be learned from those and bringing it back to the organization, that's going to be important as a part of the entire org strategy, organization strategy and HR strategy, okay? And also looking at, you know, especially, you know, I'm talking about uh, in this point, you know, where uh, we're in startup, you know, trying to be in the hybrid workspace, you know, look at strategic partnership where we can add skills and helps the business to enter into new uh, territories altogether, which we did in, in September, 2020, we moved from only a mobility provider to a hybrid workspace provider, okay? And the last, I think, which is the most important part, which is, you know, embracing the future, okay? And uh, I think I think this, you know I think it's we can keep on saying this and but you know we have to embrace future as if uh, we are every day we're going through the change and biggest uh, challenge you know I, uh, I I don't know about other functions but at least I see you know uh, we as HR sometimes you know we we try to uh, hold back to the past glories okay I think we cannot hold back to the past glories we we have to embrace the future we have to connect more and more with the individuals, employees, understand the you know, business context altogether, okay? And, and almost all HR leaders, especially HR managers, HR leaders have uh, you know, now have to have be, become the coach. They have to become the coach, you know, they have to go and coach each and individual uh, employees, create the bond and you know, help them you know, uncover their potential and skill because uh, the skills are changing also. So that, that's where, again, HR will play a role. So I think, you know, if you have to summarize, I think one, technology, use of technology and create a, you know, human-centric organization. That's where the most important part HRs will play. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Das. Uh, so moving on to our next panelist, may I request uh, uh, Mr. Shatrunjay Krishna to present his views. Thanks, Mr. So I think uh, I'll, I'll echo what uh, uh, Anmol and Mr. Shiva can say. You know, these are uh, these are uh, uh, good times to reinvent and relook at a lot of things. So, uh, you know, in a way, I'll twist this question: is that what what opportunity does it present? You know, the entire you know, change. In a typical change management cycle, you have uh, you know unfreezing, then change, and then refreezing. I would say that you know obviously there's a lot of uncertainty, and it'll go. Nobody knows when this uncertainty is going to end. All these you know variants we're talking about, 
But uh, at some time, I think it provides definitely an opportunity to look at uh, uh, you know, uh, these things. And as everybody has spoken, there is a need for agility because uh, the system is going to be you know, shaken for the time being. So when you are being shaken, you, know, you have to be flexible. When you are asked to you know, do a gymnast, <laughs> then you have to have flexibility in your body. So definitely you have to be flexible and agile. There's no doubt about that. HR also has to be flexible and agile. One of the things that you know I can speak from my own observation and my own experience is that how do we become you know agile in HR, both in the process and technology and their experience here? What I would like to share is that uh, when we want to be agile, uh, you know, we have to go back and you know sort of strip things from all the jargon that we keep speaking about in HR and go to the fundamental thing. Why is this required? You know, why is this policy? Why do we have a layer and layer and layer and that's what we have done you know in, in my company as well you know we are sufficiently complex company we need not be so complex but we are because obviously as you have the layers and layers you know uh, uh, something has happened and then you know one layer has happened after that and nobody has the time and energy uh, to you know look at and ask the fundamental question so as we go a chase for agility what will help us is simplicity so we need to cut through all this thing and you know go back to simple principles uh, of human behavior simple principles of business operations and simple uh, principles of experience you know a consumer experience like an employee experience and then we sort of go back and reduce and everybody i think has spoken about that we simplify and we make it very, you know, simple. At the same time, we, you know, enable it through technology. So these two things are great opportunity for us uh, in, in order to build the agile system. So we make it very simple. Uh, we make it, uh, you know, very uh, uh, technology driven. And as we make simple and technology driven, we'll also be, you know, uh, able to, you know, cater to different device segment. Uh, traditionally, it was not possible to, you know, uh, do different variations, but with technology, we can do that, you know, fitting, uh, we can, you can use technology for that. So I would say that, you know, in a single point advice for a lot of other students here is that this time, this, this has provided us, at least my experience is that opportunity to simplify organization, simplify HR processes, simplify, you know, almost entire higher to retire, you know, processes. And with that simplification, we can be more agile. So a lot of dead wood that, uh, and a lot of, you know, layers and layers of dust that gets, you know, uh, accumulated uh, uh, should be, you know, sort of uh, dusted off and uh, we can build a new system. And that would be significantly simpler more useful to employee, more useful to business operations. That is, that is what I will say. Thank you. Thank you. So um, moving on to the final topic for today's discussion. So um, uh, against the backdrop of this pandemic, now uh, you all would have witnessed that more and more organizations are moving towards purpose-driven businesses. So. Um, not only as individuals, many of us are uh, trying to follow our calling rather than the typical jobs that we used to perform, but also businesses at large are trying to be more purpose-driven. So uh, how can HR as a function support organizations in running purpose-driven businesses? So uh, Mr. Garewal, uh, would you like to respond, please? Okay, great. So uh, firstly, uh, I would answer it by saying that, uh, you know, if you want to drive a purpose driven business, hire purpose driven people firstly. So when you're interviewing, uh, look at what, what the people stand for. And uh, it's not, uh, uh, it is, are they passionate about what they want to do in life? So it, it all starts with hiring right, I would say. So hire purpose driven people. But then the story doesn't end over there. So once you get purpose-driven people, you have to engage them constantly. And then engage them to a purpose which they find within the organization. Right. So then that becomes a win-win thing. 
But as you know, the rest of the panelists have said, the first thing where HIR can really add value is to add speed to innovation because the way forward for your business model is only now innovation. And whether we use the word agility, speed to market, omni-channel, whatever we may say, you know, all the jargon, but uh, core purpose is how, how well is HR adding speed to your business in terms of innovation. And that is linked to hiring purpose-driven people, engaging them to a purpose. And I would say that uh, I'm now a big, big proponent of cost-free engagement. I'll give a very small example. So what I do is each week I call a specialized person, even within the company or outside the company to come and give a talk. And believe in me, the way we've been able to energize each other for the last one and a half hours, it, it brings a lot of energy. For example, you bring in a chief medical officer of the government to talk about talk about managing the pandemic. You bring in a lady superintendent of police to talk about women's safety. Right. So what I mean to say is the only expense which I incurred on this was, was a bouquet and a cup of tea and, you know, it creates engagement, uh, which is limitless. So... I would say a way ahead is, you know, creating people to a, uh, converting people, you know, attaching them to a purpose and, and create a lot of interaction spaces, which do not incur high capital expense or any expense for that matter. Right. And uh, the biggest driving force now for all businesses is going to be ESG, which is environmental, social and governance, right? So is your HR ready for it? Is your business certified? Is your business, uh, does your company have a sustainability agenda or a sustainability report? So what is happening is as your shareholders and your global investors are evaluating you on ESG. So that is one part of the story. Second is how, how well integrated is your supply chain, right? In terms of, you know, human rights, in terms of, you know, uh, compliance with the land of the, the law of the land, right? So these are the issues. So what you do is you have to bring in activists, you know, who champion a cause for the company and at the same time are passionate about, about bringing about the change. I think that's all. I've covered about three, four points, I think, but that's right. So just summarize, hire them, right? Engage them, engage them in a cost-free fashion and integrate them with your ESG policy. That is where you will have a win-win for. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garewal. So, uh, Mr. Das, uh, you may please respond to this question. Yeah, sure. I think I think very, very difficult question to respond, but I'll try uh, uh, my level best. I think, uh, you know, one, like, let's look at how suddenly the purpose came into 4A. Okay. So, so I come from a very, very uh, humble background. So, where my father worked for uh, Indian Railways, you know, in grade D, where he used to break, uh, you know, make those railway tracks. Okay. So I think you know, throughout his life, he had only one purpose to provide us food, provide us shelter, uh, and obviously education to the extent that he could. Uh, the world has changed. Even when I was studying possibly uh, in a B school, so you know, the purpose was, you know, can I get a job in my uh, dream company and dream package? Okay. Uh, but now, especially after pandemic, and especially when I joined this uh, startup, so I, I realized, you know, the concept of purpose has changed. So I'm talking to a lot of candidates, okay, who imagine, so we are, we're talking about, you know, giving 50% uh, CTC hike, but still they are actually talking about terms, okay, they're saying, you know, I oh, know, I don't want to do this, I want to do this way, that way. So, you know, the sense of purpose is uh, being created, one, because uh, the opportunities are immense, okay. Uh, you can always, you know, decide what you want to do for living or not, because uh, the concept uh, has changed. At least I'm talking about mid-class and above. I'm not talking about pure people who are in a very, very different segment. Okay, they're still struggling for their life. I think that's where I created that entire shift in uh, purpose. And second, you know, the skill. Okay, not uh, the moment you have a skill, you define your market. You know, so we are talking about the great resignation. And someone said, like, you know, yesterday it was. Uh, employer driven market but today it is not it is candidate driven market they choose what they want to okay so coming back to like you know uh, the entire purpose on how hr can create it, okay uh, hr can help uh, in that so i was reading something uh, uh, it's a mckinsey model okay so you know and it talks about a couple of imperatives that uh, hr leaders possibly can use uh, in the organization for the future and you know the interestingly the first factor Okay, they, it talks about uh, 
uh, that HR needs to talk about is uh, defining who we are. When I say who we are, it's who we as an organization, right? So there, you know, we know the HR possibly helps, you know, being clear about the organization, why, what, and how, and why we exist, what it does, how it runs. That, that's the, you know, I think single most important question, you know, especially the HR leaders have to start defining that for their organizations. Okay, uh, because this is where you are going to bring the talent that you want. Somebody talked about, uh, find out people uh, with purpose, correct? So, you know, I think finding out is a very, very difficult uh, factor. I think it's better uh, we put ourselves in the market with a brand that this is our purpose. And, and if, you know, people comes, it is going to be an e easier catch. Okay, and here, you know, uh, you know, again, I'm going back to the McKinsey model. So, it, you know, they, in the who we are, they uh, define in three parts. One is purpose, uh, value, and culture, okay? And then obviously we have second concept, how we operate, how we grow, okay? And now coming back, how uh, HRs are going to play a significant role in this. I think uh, here again, you know, it's going to be making sure that, you know, uh, we hire people, you know, the, with the purpose that, you know, we want to bring in, okay? Uh, but before that, you know, I think with every leader on the organization, okay, sit down, you know, make them understand. And many a times, uh, especially in a, in a startup space, you know, they understand, okay, this is my idea. We want to grow this idea. And, you know, and uh, the concept of annual recurring revenue, we will make this million, and that million, okay? And in that flow, uh, somehow, you know, uh, the founder's dilemma also happens that, you know, we, we forget to talk about or, or you know, re-instating uh, uh, the, every time going back to saying okay, this is the purpose of the organization and that gets diluted over the period of time because you are always fighting for survival okay and that obviously you know i have seen personally you know disengagement happening because no one knows what's the purpose of the organization and then everyone comes for one job and then goes for another job uh, with some hike or some benefits they get extra into the in different organization so that's where you know i think uh, the hr leaders will play a role second you know hr also need to go and Articulate, you know, you know, kind of, uh, kind of the role models, okay, or, or the individual mindset that you need in the organization, okay, and that's where you know uh, the communication, which, which I think, uh, one thing which actually I'm working on and trying to learn. Possibly, I will uh, contact some of the panelists here, so you know, to help me, you know, how how do we communicate? Because I think uh, going back and reiterating the communication and the different channels, you know, different methodology till the time it it gets ingrained in almost all employees from the day they join till the time they, they are in the organization. And I'm talking about till the time because uh, and I think in my sense, you know, three years is it's a big time in the organization. We should be giving more than three years long service award. Uh, the concept should be changed. Okay. And then, uh, you know, uh, you know, another concept which, which, which is coming, uh, I think it's, it's, it's in the market in the employee experience. And if you build you know, every moment of truth in your life cycle of that particular employee, keeping the purpose in mind, okay? And keep on rewarding those moments of truth, okay? Which is in line with the values, in line with the purpose of the organization. And that's where the HR plays a role because the business is going to be always busy. They, they, they are going to be busy and for the right reasons, they need the ARR to, you know, pay the salary. So I, I'll, I, I, you know, uh, I come, I work with the bigger organizations where cash flow is not a problem. Monthly salary was not a problem. Now I work with the startup, okay? Uh, we are we're doing really well, but still the concept is, okay, we need to survive for a longer period. So the cash flow becomes a concept, correct? Okay? So how do you make sure, like, you know, even the business is busy in making sure that ARR, next client, next big client, next multi-year contract is, you know, taken care of, but at the same time, you know, we, we, we keep in every moment of truth that uh, this is our purpose. And that's what is going to bring the employee experience. At least, you know, whatever my uh, uh, myopic view of the world, whatever I'm seeing around the world, whatever I feel, okay, that's also I'm talking about. I think if, uh, and that's where the HR, HR comes to play, HR leaders comes to play. We should, again, going back what I said, you know, uh, step back stop for some time, rethink, 
okay this is if this is this is what bring the employee experience or not if it is not bringing the employee experience that you want to build the organization your purpose is is going to be lost okay and and call it out call it out when someone is role playing modeling that purpose of this organization the value of the organization who you want to become i'll give you a simple example of my organization currently so we build this product work in sync and we actually you know uh, working with a lot of clients in the, in the us france canada uh, all the way to very new organization we still got very very good clients and uh, and we are talking about we want to bring you back to office but at the same time we are talking about we want to create a hybrid model and that's the organization's purpose is become now okay and if tomorrow i go back and i tell my employees okay guys from tomorrow five days a week please come to office okay so imagine like you know uh, the purpose of an organization i'm creating for the outside world uh, but inside you know uh, i'm different it, it's same like you know uh, someone who is a practitioner uh, let's say be it mindfulness or someone who Uh, gives you a dietitian and they they tell the entire world that you know this is what you should do it is this is what you should not do but then this person goes and have every day a cheat day because the purpose is lost correct and it will not be uh, sustainable after some time especially the market is really really hot and i don't think it's going to go back because the concept of uh, degrees are changing the concept of uh, you know who you are going to hire are changing if today if i get someone who is even a 10th standard i'm okay to take them as long as they can communicate as as long as they have a skill to deliver what i want okay i will not possibly wait for someone to go to a degree okay and that, that's what the market is so basically you had a smaller pool okay uh, who you know and the, the pool are getting smaller and smaller because you only have few skilled individuals in the world so i think that's where the hr will play a role and uh, i'm i'm really hopeful okay i'm 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 uh, doing lot of uh, uh, trial and error i don't know how successful will we be but no i think i'm i'm very hopeful uh, this is where uh, the hr for, you know from you know uh, kind of being a joke of you know being rangoli maker to become picasso i think this is the time and even if i we still believe that you know, the hr is a joker but it is going to be a trump card thank you thank you mr das so uh i think we are running short of time so we'd now proceed with the question and answers so uh there's one question from the audience so uh let me read that out for you so one panelist talked about how okr systems are being promoted and uh, mr shatrunjay talked about the importance of teams so how do we balance this especially when the born internet and differently socialized generation feels that the screen is the end all of work so anybody among the panelists would like to take this up uh okay uh, i think satrun ji wants to go with this no no go ahead to tell the yeah yeah i just want to take that uh, okr part because i'm actually experimenting with that okay uh, so okr you know it, i know it's it's again like you know bringing back the trust okay and at the same time delivering what you want okay again what we talked about the entire uh, uh today's evening okay uh like you know how do you bring a purposeful organization okay uh here we're talking about so you know uh, setting up the objective in such a way okay which becomes you know it's kind of a one like you know it's a, it's a, an ambition it's it's a purpose that organization want to drive okay and then breaking it down to key results okay uh i and and i believe that you know this is how you know in this uh, uh, kind of future world that we are going to without tracking still deliver the highest possible results that we want to deliver for the organization okay uh, as long as everyone uh, in the organization knows what they are coming for what what value addition they are making to the purpose of the organization okay and i think that will have a big impact uh, and coming back to the how do we balance especially when the born internet and differently i think the, again coming back i think uh, uh, if i'm born in the same era or not uh, skilling reskilling is going to be the key okay uh, i cannot complain for example so i i as i told you so you know i uh, was born and you know i got educated in in bengali medium and assamese medium through my career so when i came to bombay i wanted to become a background dancer just to uh, tell you uh, so i i do well uh, i dance well uh, 
when i came to bombay i realized you know i don't know hindi i don't know english and uh, the only thing i know bengali and i know assam is very well uh, but that was not going to help me so the only uh, uh, way that i could survive i could you know make mark in the world okay fortunately unfortunately english was important correct okay? uh, so that then you reskill it okay my mom didn't know how to uh, operate in a uh, leave aside uh, smartphone not even mobile we didn't have a telephone at home uh, but you know these days i think she's already calling you know almost five times she call a video call on a smartphone i think uh, we have to uh, if you have to survive we have to do well uh, i think we need to reskill whatever is required maybe like you know you don't need to be an expert in everything okay but it is requirement required yeah Mr. Shatranjay, would you like to add something? I just want to add this point. Obviously, there is nothing wrong with uh, you know being technology savvy. So, if uh, this generation is digital native, it is good. Uh, and obviously, that goes without saying that you know beyond uh, beyond the screens, there is life, and everybody understands <laughs> understands that. Uh, but there is no problem in being digital native. You know, the world will require you to be that. So, I would say that's. Uh, that's something that uh, is a good skill and you know you will be expected to you know make use of it in terms of uh, being an out uh, outside there is a lot of other things which cannot be done digitally i would say it's an obvious truth so there is no point, point going there obviously there is an obvious truth that uh, there is a there is a life uh, you know beyond uh, where the digital stops and you know human interactions start mattering so i think if, uh, when you come to the employment world not only employment world in your home see this self evident truth uh, so you just need to be remind, reminded of these self evident truth and you know uh, this will be all all fine thank you okay thank you mr das and mr krishna so uh, i'd probably post the next question uh, for the two of you uh, mr nagpal and mr garewal so uh, you know i have also personally this is a question from my end as well so uh, there are lots of reports which tell you that people are battling with mental health i'm sure we all have discussed it here and uh, if we talk about therapists so there are more than 900 calls every day that they're getting from people facing uh, issues like anxiety depression post traumatic stress disorder so uh, you know now we've talked about how organizations can revamp their hr systems so it is possible that we have the best of the hiring policies the best of the compensation plans the best engagement plans but probably people are not some people are not in the right frame of mind to accept those or probably to you know appreciate those initiatives being done by the hr so uh, it could be that those people are actually very talented and could be assets to the organization but because of the current situation they are not being able to cope so on the mental health front how can organizations support their employees and um, help them better their mental health so uh, your perspectives on this please so uh, thank you madhurima i think uh, like i think uh, we previously discussed about mental health and its importance and how it has how this pandemic has brought this right to the forefront and not just mental health, i think overall well being is definitely is, is is something a cause of concern that everybody is uh, working through i'll pick up on the point that chatranjay made a few minutes back was around how do we need to simplify things right this is like a spring clean for all hr and organization processes that we need to make things simple and make things i i would say more human in hr right i think so far hr was running after metrics of productivity and how efficient we are and how effective we are now this is a time when i think it's important to show the human side of hr and that's where the whole mental health and well being is 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 coming up as one more one of the most important priorities if mental health and well being is not there i think no other metrics can follow and deliver on, on the organization expectations so i think i think i've seen i think many great organizations are doing some great initiative in this space and uh, it's not just about employee counseling or employee assistance programs or you know counselor services i think first and foremost i think one thing that we need to build as a culture through our organizations or through our society at large is 
is what first is by non not stigmatizing the whole mental health issue right today i think millions of people might be suffering from a depression or an anxiety but it's very difficult to accept it admit it and seek therapy so i think one of the first things that we can build as a culture in the organization is to be more open and a more maybe a more psychologically safer space where i can go and say that yes i have issue with anxiety or i have issue with depression and that that's one if that is that admittance is done i think you're half the battle is won then i think any counseling or any therapy would would deliver what the results that's in, that's there so i think yes so i think the whole bravado about you know that i sit late in office i can do so much work in a day i can work 20 hours in a day i think that's something which is now a thing of the past today i need to be effective i need to be efficient i need to be mentally physically healthy and that's when i can deliver so i think yes so this stigma and this whole false bravado of working long hours i think that's something that hr can start by you know uh, setting the right expectation and the right culture in the organization over to you and more well uh, thanks siddharth i think you said said it all but uh, yeah just to share that of course companies are providing the employee assistance program and you know we have also got tie ups you know we keep on having sessions on yoga on mudras and then one one help dot net but you know everything doesn't help that way uh, the first thing is i'll tell you the first victim of the pandemic has been the me time which all of us used to have because uh, any organization when you are working on a weekend and you are having a zoom call you know with your family waiting for you at the dinner table or something you know uh, that's been a very very negative baggage of the last one and a half two years i'll be very honest and upfront about it you know i don't have to mince my words right and uh, i think the first first thing is if you want to hold on to your talent let the immediate supervisor immediate manager become the well being manager as well for his team and there are some basics to it you know in terms of a year on the ground knowing whether someone is going through some sort of a personal problem right uh, for example a small thing i was in uttarakhand and some of the managers houses got flooded you know all you had to do was give that one month's advance salary because you know suddenly you realize your 3 lakh worth of household goods are under water you know and you don't have the capital with you immediately that one or two months extra salary you know which of course is an, is an advance you're going to recover it from the first right so what i'm trying to say is that listen to people peers on the ground and respect their work life balance you know these are the only mantras rest any battle people indians are strong enough to you know manage it on their own <laughs> but uh, ensure that you know they don't have to go through the trauma you know of uh, working long hours and all because all that you know if all that was really making us productive we would be doing much better financially <laughs> yeah thank you mr garewal so uh, many of you have talked about the great resignation so um, regarding that i'd like to ask you something so um, you know researchers have found out that because of the pandemic there has been an inflated risk taking ability among people so people are more willing to take risks and um, like like we've discussed many people are quitting their jobs and starting their own entrepreneurial ventures so uh, from an hr standpoint what apart from pay and probably flexible uh, working arrangements can hr do to retain talent during such times Would anyone of you to respond? I think uh, I'll just say one line. I think it's a very difficult question. Uh, we all are experimenting in our own spheres. Uh, don't have an exact answer. Otherwise, I would have retained almost all my employees. Uh, but one thing that we realize, you know, uh, the people you know who are leaving right now suddenly uh, they see there is a disconnect between the organization and them. Okay, and it can be multi in multiple fronts. It can be Uh, how we have taken care of them possibly that's not how they wanted to be taken care of okay and uh, and the proposition of career has changed uh, like you know uh, they're not uh, any more bound by a concept and rules that's creating the biggest challenge and we are definitely experimenting i uh, don't have the right answer otherwise you know we would have possibly so my attrition is very very high at this point of time uh, i won't have that attrition the answer still in the making 
you know, I, if anyone has the answer, please you know, do share. I'll try uh, experimenting in my organization too. Yeah. So would anyone like to respond? I think, uh, Professor Madhurima, I think your answer was in your previous question, which was about purpose driven. I think one one of uh, one of the important things that today, when people are in this whole situation of uh, you know changing loyalties and taking risk taking and uh, you know moving organizations, I think very important is to align those align the purpose of the organization with the purpose of the employee. So I think we have to show them and demonstrate that in many ways beyond compensation and benefits and training opportunities and promotions is about you know how their purpose aligns with the organization and how organization purpose aligns with theirs so i think that's one of the things that uh, that's important to demonstrate articulate and deliver i think very few good organization can do that it's very easier said than done but uh, yeah that's the challenge that we are all working towards okay any final comments Mr. Krishna? Okay, I think uh, fundamentals remain the same. So obviously you have to push through multiple levers to you know, have this uh, retention challenge. Uh, I would say it will vary from employee segment. So the lower level you know, talent is mobile always and it will remain mobile. Probably it will increase its mobility more. I think mid-level there are some other dynamics and top level there are some other dynamics. So uh, this is a larger question, as you know, as all of us would agree that you know, um, you know, we know the we know what is to be done. You know, there are seven eight levers we need to push, but in what sequence, to what intensity, etc., that will vary from organization to organization, and industry to industry. But definitely, you know, this is you know, uh, basic fundamental that we know the levers, but uh, it's an execution that 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 essentially matters. So. The organizations have to find their sweet spot. Sometimes when attrition is good, so you you clean up and hire everybody new. So that's 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 great for us. So uh, yeah, so that that I'll say that this is a good question, and organizations keep to you know asking themselves this question and finding their own individual answers. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Krishna. So uh, I think let's close here. So I'll hand over the stage or you know, this platform to the MC. So uh, Ridhima, would you please like to take over? Thank you, ma'am. I would now request Purnama ma'am to please deliver a vote of thanks. Thank you, Ridhima. So thank you all for uh, this enlightening session. I think we learned a lot about what is happening in the HR community right now. Uh, one thing I think which is a common trend is that uh, HR needs to be more agile. That's what most of, I think all the panelists have spoken about that uh, it needs to have a business impact and um, uh, not just business impact, but also the cultural impact. We need to be more cognizant of employees. And as uh, the last question was saying that uh, employee attrition is a big problem. And uh, that is what I think some of the panelists also mentioned that the great, the, it's an employee driven market rather than the employer driven market, which is changing. And therefore to engage employees, we need to hire right, hire passionate people, who match with our purpose, I think that's what uh, was coming out, that uh, it should be based on what is the purpose the organization has and is it matching the purpose that the employees or the candidates are also willing to work for because that's the only uh, link between getting them to stay. Rethinking is another thing which I think was a common thread amongst all the panelists as well as trust, building trust because remote working requires a lot of trust. How do we trust that if somebody is working from home, they're actually working? And that is where, uh, as uh, Jitwendra mentioned, that OKR and all those, so it's uh, it seems to be very objective, but what we are saying is that if uh, we have defined the objectives and the key result areas, how does it matter when does he work and how does he work as long as he's delivering the results? So that is another way which uh, I think the change is happening in the organizations, that trusting employees, hiring right. Again, I think it all follows from that. If you hire right people who you trust to perform the great job, you don't need to monitor them too much. And they will do it anyway. So that is one of the thinking uh, which uh, all of you have spare said. So um, I think it was a great insight. Uh, the training, you know, as uh, you mentioned, uh, Mr. Nagpal, that uh, we need to have agile training system, bite-sized training, 
people don't have time to go for a week long earlier training used to be more of okay i get time off from office i can go and spend something somewhere nice and uh, get trained in uh, in the meanwhile but now it is more of training on the go so you have one hour free have something look at a youtube video attend a session so all these changes are uh, i think taking the hr to the new uh, future of work which is uh, as uh, you all mentioned that we should not hold on to the past glories and uh, use this opportunity to trim the dead ends and become more agile faster and for that we need to yes we need to remove all the uh, weight which is uh, weighing us down and the old practices and i think that this is one opportunity which the pandemic has given us we can let go of a lot of our old useless time consuming practices and becoming more agile so thank you so much all of you for uh, this wonderful session and uh, i would also like to thank our director uh, for giving us this opportunity i would uh, also like to thank madhurima for moderating the session very well thank you so much madhurima thank you all the faculty members for a patient hearing and being a part of this discussion as well as posing some questions thank you sahil and ridhima for doing a wonderful job juhi on the background for creating the ppts thank you sushri bruno and all the marketing team for creating uh, doing all the creatives for uh, the digital campaign it for the techn uh, technological support because i think one of the biggest um, contributors nowadays have become the it team we can't do it without them because something goes wrong we just you know they have become the most important thing the background of all our work so i think they are the busiest people so thank you so much thank you shweta for uh, coordinating with all the panelists thank you shelja kirti um, for getting the panelists and for this eminent session and last but not least the students for your patient hearing i hope you learned something today so thank you so much